All right, welcome everyone to the uh, March Credit Watch Business Risk Index. So I'm James O'Donnell, Director of Open Analytics and very close partner to the Credit Watch team. Um, I'm joined today by Credit Watch's Chief Economist, Annika Thompson. So welcome, Annika. Everyone. Okay, so it's probably quite a quite a lot to get through this quarter. So for those of you who are new new to the Business Risk Index. What this session is, it's really a, a bit of an update, both on the general economy and then also sharing what we're seeing in the in the credit watch data. So, of course, all the the data that a lot of the data that I'll be talking through comes directly from credit watch. Um, so probably the the key sort of piece here is the credit watch sort of customer base, a very large pool of customers, so over fifty five thousand um, users of, of credit watch. And the key one, which I'll talk to in a bit of detail, is the very large volume of uh, trade lines. So trade activity data is a key thing that we report on, and we've got a very big pool of, of data providers there. Okay, so look, I think I think we'll start with the with the expert. So I'll, I'll hand over to Annika to to start with a, a general sort of economic uh, update. Great, thanks, James. Um, so I thought we'd start off um, by looking, you know, obviously something very relevant to today's data, what's happening um, with businesses. So where we're sitting at in the economic cycle at the moment is it's sort of um, a wait and see now to what happens to businesses, consumers, households, now that we're in um, this um, monetary, restrictive monetary policy um, settings. Um, and as an economist, it's, it's probably, it's one of those Hopefully, you know, three times in your life, three or four times in your career, you get to see um, what really happens in the economy um, while we're in these settings. So it's quite fascinating um, sitting here at the moment watching all this data come in. But I guess the good news is in Australia that businesses are actually responding quite well. Um, and we saw, you know, NAB's um, really good business um, conditions index that confidence had started dropping. So that's that red line on the chart. Um, and conditions had slowly started dropping, but off a very, very high base. Um, what the latest data shows is that confidence actually bounced up again a little bit. So um, it's very different to what was happening with consumer confidence, where consumer confidence dropped and it kept on dropping, dropping, dropping um, to you know really, really low levels. Whereas business confidence dropped a little bit, but um, it's not at, it's not at um, dangerously low levels, and it's sort of plateauing as well. So. Businesses are still reporting really good um, trading conditions. There's two sort of exceptions to that. That was um, the mining and the retail sector. Um, they showed large falls in conditions. Um, the retail sector showing large falls, well, it's not great for that sector, is probably something the RBA really wants to see. They want to see evidence that um, consumers are shutting their wallets and we're starting to see that evidence now. Um, importantly, capacity utilisation is very steady. So capacity utilisation is basically um, how much of a business's um, um, operating capacity they have and what they're using, it's really, really high. Um, and it's a very strong co correlation between capacity utilisation and unemployment. So when that's high, um, unemployment tends to stay low and that's what we're seeing happening um, at the, in the economy at the moment. Um, the good news is this data is very reflective of um, our strong trading data that James will show you um, in the next couple of slides. Um, and other really positive news, and this is great um, for all borrowers out there, is that cost pressures reduced in all categories um, in NAB's latest survey. So it's a further sign that inflation has well and truly peaked. And again, I think there's something the RBA will really be watching, um, cost of labour, um, supply, um, the cost that they're going to charge um, consumers for their goods have all um, started to decrease um, from peaks. So that is, that is a really good sign. Uh, just moving on to the next slide. Thanks, James. Come on. Yep, here we go. So um, business conditions obviously flows onto employment. This is the next, you know, after inflation, um, this is the next um, big indicator that the RBA will be watching closely. Um, if any of you have seen my pre our previous BRIs, I thought employment had peaked. Um, I was wrong, happy to admit it. Um, so we've still got um, that employed people line um, going up and up. Um, um, and it's an excellent buffer all round for, you know, higher costs, not just um, interest rates, but higher rents um, and higher overall costs. So that will be something, um, it's sort of a, a good and a bad um, for the RBA. Um, you know, they like to see strong employment in the economy. 
but also it might um, just make make our inflation story come down a bit slower. Um, the other important point, point to note is that Seek Employment Dashboard data, which comes out monthly, so every single category is showing a drop in um, in job advertisements at the same time last year. So last few months we have seen some sectors that had an increase in jobs available. They were the um, education, training and the accounting sectors, so they're now actually falling as well. So it's a good indicator that um, while we might be employing more people, um, the labour force is, is actually um, improving from the employment employee employer perspective, sorry. Um, and we're going to see some um, more slack and you know more movement around the labour force, which is which is good because it helps with productivity. Um, and the next slide might sort of help us understand why that in overall employment figure is going up, um, and that is because of net overseas migration. Um, I think it surprised everyone on the upside just how strong um, overseas migration has bounced back uh, since. Um, the end of lockdown. So you see the, the latest data we have is up to September 2022. Um, and we had really strong um, quarters in March 2022, September 22, strongest than, than we've ever had. And it was interesting that it's sort of all across Australia. Usually net overseas migration is heavily concentrated in Victoria and New South Wales. Um, but we're seeing really strong results in Queensland and WA as well. So every sort of state, um, even the ACTs having a big result um, is, is benefiting from this. So it, these people are helping to fill jobs, but they're also creating pressure on our residential market, which um, you know I think we're, we can all see out there in what's happening with rents. Um, and this is the next slide. So I guess um, if we think about businesses, the next one we, we can think about is consumers. So consumers are the one that are really feeling the pain of interest rates at the moment and retail sales on a per capita basis um, are actually going backwards. So if you see that this red bar on the, the chart on the um, far right, it's about where it was in September last year. So we, you know, huge um, additional number of people in Australia, but we have an increased sales add onto that inflation um, and we're actually buying less in volume terms than we were in September last year. So a good thing, what the RBA wants to see and consumer confidence, although it's stopped sort of dropping and, it, and it's, it's improved slightly on last month, it's still at very, very low levels. So um, even if we've reached the top of the interest rate cycle, consumers are still um, very pessimistic and, and not likely to be opening their, their wallets anytime soon. So finally, just um, an outlook, um, final, you know, three points for our outlook. Um, we are in restrictive um, monetary policy settings, um, but employment is still really, really strong. So, um, and I think, you know, the RBA probably wants to see the unemployment rate get to four, four and a half percent. So they're sort of comfortable that we're at equilibrium level. Um, so unfortunately, there is a risk that the cash rate will move higher again after May's board meeting, but we've also got a quarterly inflation um, figure coming out um, next week on the 26th. So that piece of data will be absolutely key to their decision making. Um, but the strong employment is a bright spot for us. It means people can maintain um, their interest, their mortgage repayments, um, even though it's difficult. Um, it's, you know, it's a much better position than if we had un high unemployment, which would be you know, disastrous for our economy. Um, and we anticipate that household spending um, is, is going to get even lower. Um, we've got a lot of fixed rate loans coming off um, over the next few months. So even consumer confidence might starting to, to improve a little bit. Um, the reality is a lot of households will have a lot less money to spend um, over you know, at least the next six months till we start seeing interest rates dropping. Great, well, thanks very that's much. That's it for me. I'll pass over to James. Yeah, that was a good update. So look, I'll, I'll now drill into a bit more detail. So what what I'll do now is I'll take you through some of the some of the interesting data we're seeing out of the, the creditor watch world. So um, oh, whoops, now that one got in there. So uh, okay, so the first chart here is our trade receivables. Apologies there, having a few technical glitches for the slides. Hopefully it stays on this slide. So this is a big one for us. So uh, this is probably our favourite chart. So this is measures the average trade um, receivables for a very special subset of our data suppliers. So this is all of our small business data suppliers who are providing data through accounting software integration. 
So what we've seen for a long time, it's been very depressed and we've seen the last month that's really sort of kicked up. So that sort of last March, the, you know, the average dollars in sort of trade turnover for our small business customers has really jumped up. So to be honest, we actually, I expected that to jump up several months ago, probably six months ago. So it's good to, to finally see it sort of bounce up again. Um, and I'll show you a bit later, it sort of corroborates some of the data coming out of the ATO, also suggesting that certainly this month, other months, that sort of business trade activity has really picked up. Um, next chart is along the same line, so credit inquiries. So the number of uh, credit inquiries is another good indicator of trade activity. And you can see the, the latest month there, really big kick up. So, and at this point, it's, it's basically double what it was last year. So that sort of continued to, to trend up, which is a good sign. So overall, we're seeing more sort of businesses seeking credit, more turnover and, and more sort of trade activity, which is a good sign. Um, now to some sort of adverse indicators. So external administration, it's pretty flat this month, but if you sort of squint your eyes and look at the average over the last 12 months, it's still, if you look at it on an annual basis, it's still quite up quite a bit from the, the COVID lows. So we're still expecting defaults, insolvencies, external administrations to, to keep trending up over the, the next 12 months or so. Um, and finally, sort of trade payment defaults. So these are yeah, defaults lodged with the Bureau. The gen, general trend we've seen over the last year, they're, they're much higher. A little bit of a kick up this month, but not, not too bad. But again, that sort of overall trend is sort of increase in trade defaults. Which is not not too surprising, um, given the sort of pickup in in trade activity. So more more trade activity, uh, more more credit defaults. Um, and then, so you bring that together, this is our sort of PD or probability of default prediction or default rate prediction. So you can see there the actuals before the shaded forecast at the end. So we've definitely seen uh, default rates sort of pick up, and our our sort of bottom up. Uh, forecast this month has actually jumped a little bit, so but not not materially. So we're still sort of expecting that, as we reported last time, that we're expecting, yeah, an increase to levels a little bit above the sort of pre pre COVID levels. Okay, so then, now going into a bit more of an industry uh, breakdown of the world. So we'll start with the same sort of probability of default broken down by industry. So the key call out here. Um, the ordering out hasn't changed much, but the, the gap between the the first one there on the left, the, the uh, food and beverage, uh, aka sort of the hospitality industry, that gap has sort of steadily widened between the, you know, both, both predicted and, and actual default rates compared to the others. Um, and when we when we use the word default, what, what we, we actually mean is basically any business failure or, or insolvency. So it includes both things like you know external administrations, but also strike off um, and sort of liquidations. Um, what I'll sort of show a bit more um, this month is sort of breaking out the specifically the external administrations because you get some some different looking results there. So if you look here, this is basically purely the percentage of businesses that have entered external administration um, over the last twelve months divided by the total number of businesses in the industry. So again, the Sort of first place is still the hospitality industry, but sort of construction is is sort of second. Now, if I jump back to that previous chart, construction sort of sixth from the the right. So it's sort of actually lower than average in terms of outright you know, business failure. But you know the the construction industry tends to be credit heavy. So more often when a construction business fails, there are there are creditors enforcing it, and and they sort of enter external administration. So again, probably the you know, same sort of story as last time, the, the two industries to you know, put on your kind of industry risk list is, is really construction and hospitality, we'd say at this point. Um, another view of sort of payment arrears. So this, again, to those small, small business data suppliers and large business data suppliers are sort of combined in this chart. This shows the percentage um, of our data suppliers with um, of their sort of debtors, the percentage was 60 day or more arrears uh, invoices. So construction is quite an industry, in, interesting one where, you know, it is perennially the sort of the worst payer. Now it's sort of much, much worse payer to the smaller 
uh, suppliers than the, the bigger guys. So the red bars are the big big business um, late payment rates. So think of that's your you know that's your bank and your creditors, whereas the you know the other the grey bars are your, the small business. So construction is one of the biggest gaps between payment times between big and, and small businesses. Um, then drilling a bit more into construction. Um, so here's the external administration rates for construction. Um, obviously, there's been some big names in the media that have there's been actually four in the last quarter large construction companies that have gone into liquidation. Um, but you can still see there that the the rate of external administrations it's still well below what it was. Yeah, the, the baseline rates of the pre-COVID. Um, so again, compared to the default rates, this is accelerating a bit more on the construction industry. So nothing you know, really alarming, but we do expect that to, to keep rising in terms of more sort of construction, um, external administrations and defaults. Okay, so now this is, uh, I mentioned at the very start, the trade activity, trade receivables data that we monitor on, on our small business data suppliers. This is some data from the ADS um, released quite recently. And basically the media release from the ADS that is suggesting that this March uh, month was actually unusually high in terms of um, business turnover as reported uh, to, the, to the ATO. Um, so basically, most of the red bars there are the, the monthly results. So most in industries are a pretty big kick up and funnily enough, sort of construction's at the top there. Um, I suspect some of that's to do with the sort of point that Annika raised around. It's not the number of um, transactions that may you know, cost inflation and inflation could be um, contributing to those numbers. But then sort of all industries overall, year on year, there's been a sort of big, big increase in turnover. So again, it's sort of all, all indicators are pointing to sort of more sort of trade activity happening across the board. Um, and then of course, the kind of risks in, I'd say construction and manufacturing, um, of course, we've all had the you know, headlines around inflation and, and mortgage repayment costs, but the kind of business um, input, particularly for construction and manufacturing um, have really risen. So. You can see there at the peak, these are producer price indices. Yeah, essentially the analog of inflation for, for the business world for their you know input costs. Um, you can sort of see peaks there between 15 and 20 percent for um, construction and manufacturing. Um, we'll see the numbers. The the next quarter numbers will come in actually in about a week's time, but it does seem to have peaked and sort of you know still the inflation is still high and the costs are still high, but they look like they've peaked and they're, they're coming off. Um, and then look, I'll, I'll, I'll finish this section on industry just with a, a note. We talk a lot about construction. It's primarily because we get asked about it um, quite a bit. Um, the construction can be tricky, particularly larger construction companies where you might look at a credit report, you see the odd defaults on there, but that's, that's pretty much the norm. So the odd default court action, um, some late payments is pretty normal for big construction companies. So we often get asked, how do we, out of those as a real issue. Um, so I've just got a bit of an example here of uh, Porter Davis, one of the, the most recent ones that sort of went down. What we do tend to see is that with the, the bigger construction companies, yeah, they're, yeah, they're reporting their financials to, to ASIC. And on the left there is our soon to be released financial rating um, as applied to, to Porter Davis. So what you see on the left here the rating is essentially a rank of the, the health of your financials relative to the whole pool of ASIC reporting entities. So yeah, close to the average and around sort of when when they release their you know, publicly available June financials, big drop in our rating to basically right down the bottom. Now this is a case where it doesn't take a, an expert credit analyst to, to see what was, you know, what, what the risks were. In this case, in the, the June financials, there's basically a huge drop, and you can see this on the right. Similar sort of ranking of these financial indi individual financial indicators. The on the top here are the, yeah, basically profit and revenue dropped significantly. So in terms of profit relative to the, yeah, the universe of ASIC reporting entities was in the top 20%, then collapsed to me in the sort of bottom 20%. Um, and then so profit revenues 
yeah, so a big drop. And then the other thing is very highly leveraged, uh, a lot of these bigger construction companies. So the the debt to EBITDA, or essentially the you know, the level of liabilities and debt relative to earnings, was about 14 times for um, for this company. So very highly leveraged. So high leverage, dropping profits. So the, it's just another source that you can look at to see uh, risk, particularly in the, the larger um, you know, construction or, or any other company. All right, so that concludes the um, look at the in industry view of the world. Um, we've got some updates on the on the geographic risk, so the look at regional risk. There's not many big changes, so I won't go into detail, but I'll, I will suggest that if you Google Creditor Watch Business Risk Index, you can go and look at the PDs and default rates and risk by individual postcode level. But I'd sort of just call out the, the key thing here is that in the list here of the highest risk, the 10 highest risk areas in the country based on the, the geographic risk index. And it, it is the same story that it's really sort of Western Sydney, very concentrated in Western Sydney um, and around the Gold Coast that Paradise is still the sort of highest insolvency rates and, and risk in the country. Okay, so look, that, that concludes the, the update. Um, so we might just finish with a, a bit of a um, poll there, so you can see the question up, up on the screen there. Um, so the poll's just been opened, so feel free to answer that. We'll give everyone a few seconds to answer that before we close out. Okay, so thanks everyone. For just a big thank you to, to Annika as well for your insights. So as I mentioned, a lot of this information, particularly on the, the geographic and business risk index, uh, you can find on the web. So you just, just Google um, business risk index or credit watch business risk index, which should be the first one that comes up. And jump on that, um, you know, encourage people to jump on that website and have a look at the, the data there. It goes quite deep into sort of postcode level risk so you can see what regions are um, uh, emerging. So thanks to everyone and I'll, we'll see you next quarter. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye.